Hey there, I'm Carrie Voss, Curator of Exhibits here at Historic Arkansas Museum. Welcome to Second Friday Art Night. Tonight we have three fantastic Arkansas artists who will be demonstrating their work here on the grounds. That includes Kasten Searles, Matthew Lopas, and Susan Chambers. Susan will be exhibiting her work in Trinity Gallery next month. We hope you enjoy their demonstrations tonight. Um, I'm Susan Chambers and I'm drawing the garden that the master, uh, the master naturalist have done. My neighbor works in this garden so I've heard a lot about it over the years. Um, First of all, just to be outside. Drawing, working, painting outside is a perfect excuse to, uh, to be in nature. Um, and I like the visual exercise of trying to record what I see. So starting with the smaller shapes at the bottom of the sage plant, and now I've worked my way back with, uh, I think it's turnips that are bolting. Um, it's a beautiful day to be out here. There's a lot of insects, wasps, things like that. Um, and then I'll use this drawing, maybe, maybe not, um, get rid of that, to end my paintings. So when I need sage or I need turnips that are bolted, then I can go to my drawing and I also record it, take photographs with my iPad. It's not high resolution, but it gives me enough information about the color and all. I don't like to be tied to the photographs. I like to have the experience of drawing and trying to understand how the plant grows so that I can use it in my painting later on. And I'd suggest lots of people need to come out here and see the herb garden, the vegetable garden, and um, see what's happening. I'm, I'm amazed with the sounds of the traffic, the amount of insect activity and the birds singing and all of that. everybody, I'm Kasten Searles. Um, I'm a painter, illustrator, and also a graphic designer. 
I teach at Henderson State University and I really enjoy um, sketching from life and also sketching in public, sketching objects. So I'm really enjoying today sketching from this beautiful old press. Um, in my own work, I really enjoy working with ink, pencil, and watercolor on paper. So most of my work is on paper. Um, I've been doing a lot of painting around Arkansas, so a lot of um, work uh, done from old road signs and things, you know, along country roads. So I'm really enjoying working with this kind of older piece of museum here. Since I'm a designer, um, I'm really interested in typography. So this was an old metal type um, press that they used to print the newspaper, I guess, and it's, it's just beautiful. I feel like watercolor is something that's really easy to grab and take on the road with you, um, which is why a lot of urban sketchers and illustrators love to use it. Howdy folks, um, my name is Matthew Lopas, and uh, I'm an artist, I live in Conway, and um, I'm painting at the Arkansas Historic Museum today. I'm working on something called a panel sphere, which is a circular painting of everything you can see from a single point. This is the horizon line. As I turn my head, I can turn the painting and look, and look around. This is, I mean, it's all just a mush right now, but this is the tree that's sort of right, right behind the camera. And um, if I were to look over, over here to my left, you can see that's the roof of the building right there. I mean, it's sort of just barely even blocked in, but we've got this sort of pink color under here, and we'll put that in there real quick. 
it's a this is a very sort of a disorienting kind of painting. And it takes up a while to get into the, the mentality of it. It's very different from a from viewfinder painting, you know? You're looking right now you're looking through a camera and it has a boundary of four four um, four walls and that determines you know what's what's vertical what's vertical is parallel to the left and right frame what's vertical in this thing is anything any line that goes through the middle all this is vertical so as i turn normally when i paint if you look at this this line right here on this uh, on the left or right side any any vertical line if you take it it goes straight down to your feet or it goes straight up to your head this is where my feet would be right here my feet would be right right there two little feet so every line goes right down to my foot. So if I were going to draw this um, this building, it's basically like this. Basically goes. I mean, this is super super quick and very. You know, and I usually get much, I get very detailed in my paintings, but of course that takes a while. So if you're going to paint that that roof, the chimney would be right there, and then the trees come down like this. Dark and that because the trees are dark. And you, and you can start to see the, um, the sky sort of in there. And there's that little green um, green tuft of that tree right up there coming behind the, uh, the building. Except I haven't painted it over here yet. The tree continues off over this way. And as I turn to the left, I'm turning my canvas to the left and all the way around to the other side. So this is a, this is a panosphere. So if you Google panosphere, you'll see photographs done according to this algorithm. It's kind of, a, it's sort of super trippy. And um, for me, it's just a way of um, getting into the landscape and not editing it. Normally when you paint, everything's surrounded by a viewfinder and you have to edit everything. I've, of course, done a lot of paintings like that, but um, I find this more interesting. So this area right behind, this all the area is really dark with tree. The tree all comes down there. So I'm gonna mix up a bunch of dark blue green here. Just put a little oil in it. My tree is right here, a tree comes down, all this is, all this stuff is tree. So I can just cover this stuff really quickly. You know, I'll come back later and, um, and really make it more specific. That's about, that, see, that's a quarter, that's halfway all the way there, that's a quarter there. So it comes down, it comes down like, like all the way over right here. This is the kind of thing where it's easy to make mistakes, but you can always fix it later because it's paint. I know. Uh, you can see this. So now we can start to see tree all the way around, earth down here, and sky starting in here, a building over there, a tree behind you there. And then over over here, so I, see I turn it to the top, this blue gray green thing here is that building up there. You can see that uh, glass color service. That color that I have is not too far off, but uh, it's, it's right there. And there's more sky in here, so I'm going to get the I'm going to get the sky down there. And I'm just there's too much to deal with, so I'm just going to call this guy white, you know, because it's just a little bit simpler. And there's that building in the atmosphere over there, kind of kind of a light yellowy thing over that way. And then you notice that building comes is sort of halfway between the, the the green gray building and gets up to the tree. Which is right about there. And then there's this brick, this brick thing here behind the tree. You know, we're just gonna call it a kind of a, a basic shade of red right now. And uh, sort of a basic shade of red in there. And that ground is a beautiful purple. All that the sticks is kind of a, a warm purpley color, which I'm gonna 
gonna spend a minute to mix. Hopefully a little better in here. I'm just getting sort of areas of color. So my tree is here. The ground, purpley ground is here. It's, it's a little lighter than that, I think. So I do all kinds of paintings that are not bounded by the viewfinder, right? That are basically more about natural looking. When you look at the world, you don't look at the world through a viewfinder. You look at the world through your two eyes. And your two eyes are not bounded by a rectangle. Your eyes sort of constitute an oval. Your eyes are constantly moving in the same way that this can constantly move, my head can constantly move, and I can sort of encompass all of uh, all of reality. And the truth is, I love to paint. So I don't, when I paint like this, I don't have to edit anything. I can paint all of it. This is this other brick building over here. A lot of people start with a, a precise drawing, but I find that kind of not so um, challenging and I love to get the color down. So I'm, I'm just laying in color for areas. Now that area of grass is really light. And actually I just realized something. That my easel is in the way of this bit. I can't see that building over there. So in order to see that building, I'm just gonna move my easel like so. And now I can look directly at that building down there. I can see this, I can see the historic Arkansas Museum right there, which is right between that building, which is this thing, that tree, which is that thing, and that building is over there. So that building actually is, this window is kind of black. So there should be a black that's about halfway between this building and the tree. Red smush is the tree, that's this building over there. So right in here is something that's black. So I'm going to mix a black. Black you can mix with dark blue and crimson red and you get a black. Is it really right in the middle? It's a little bit, half, this is halfway across, the middle would be right there. It's a little bit to the right of the middle. And it's above the horizon line, this is the horizon line here. So it's about right, black thing is right about there. So below it is green, above it is the, the roof, and then there's that roof of this other building right about there. This is all sky, that should be light. So clean my brush. I'm using a, 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 actually a watercolor brush. This is um, a, a squirrel hair watercolor brush. And the reason I use that is because it holds a ton of fluid. So. The ground where I'm standing is actually a lot darker than the grass out there. So, if you notice in the middle of my painting, it's really not that dark. And here, the middle of the painting is, is, should be darker. So let me just darken this up a little bit while I got that on my mind. So that for my food out is dark. And, um, what you're going to have eventually is a little ball of planet Earth surrounded by the, um, the tree. But let me, show you, let me show you something else. Um, this is a... This is a more traditional Tondo, Tondo's round painting. This is not the sort of turny painting, but this is a just to show you the level of finish that I'd want to bring up this bigger panosphere to. This is a painting of my wife sitting by the fire during our snow week when we all had to stay home and, um, you know, light the fires to keep the house warm. So this is, um, and there's my cat, Martin. This kind of painting really would take about a month to finish. 